So, there's this guy named Kevin who pops out of a lake looking like a drowned cat. He's all, where am I, man? And starts rambling about finding his way home. Dude, you're in a lake. After a quick air dry, he's off, but not for long. He presses a magic button on his wrist and poof, he's gone. Talk about a fancy exit. Let's rewind a bit. Kevin used to be a big shot money guy. Like, the kind who counts his cash in his sleep. But then the housing market crashed harder than a Kardashian's ego, and his company went splat. Talk about a bad hair day. This guy, who was trying really hard to be sober, decided to drown his sorrows in a sea of alcohol. He ends up in a fancy bar, orders a drink, and before he can even taste it, a girl named Molly swoops in. Turns out, Molly's friends dared her to talk to the sad guy at the bar. Classic dare, right? They start chatting, and it's like watching a slow-motion car crash, but in a good way. Kevin's like, so, where does this go? And Molly, bless her heart, lays out their entire life together. First dates, fancy dinners, church on Sundays, and then the whole married life drama. Kevin's jaw drops. He's like, whoa, slow down there, future wife. But then he's all, you know, this is sounding kinda good. Fast forward a few years, and Kevin and Molly are married. But it's like living in a horror movie. Their kid vanished, and they're both walking around like zombies. Kevin has a job that's about as fun as watching paint dry, with a boss who's younger than him and acts like a know-it-all. On his way home, he calls Molly to apologize for being a grumpy pants. She hits him with the, did you pay the bills? question, and he loses his cool. While he's busy yelling into the phone, he crashes his car. Talk about a bad day. Next, an unknown man drags Kevin out of his car, and Kevin passes out again. When he wakes up, he is in an alleyway, and the man is still there. The man introduces himself as the benefactor and offers Kevin a job. Kevin is confused and tries to go back to his car, but when he reaches the road, his car and everyone else are gone. The whole town is deserted. Kevin asks where everyone went, and the man says they didn't go anywhere. Kevin did. Kevin gets angry and threatens the man, but he laughs and says their meetings usually don't go like this. Kevin insists he has never met the man before. The man invites Kevin to dinner, and Kevin, wanting answers, agrees. As Kevin and the benefactor arrive at a cafe, everyone there looks terrified of the benefactor. During their conversation, Kevin realizes that the benefactor is actually Satan. The benefactor says he has never met a religious Kevin before, and Kevin asks what he means. The benefactor explains that the multiverse theory is true and that countless Kevins exist in countless universes, with new ones spawning every time Kevin makes a choice. He also reveals that he can shift people from one universe to another and replace them with their alternate versions. That's why no one was outside. They are no longer in Kevin's original universe. The benefactor adds that when people disagree on events, it's because he replaces them with their doppelgangers who experience different versions of the events. For example, Molly expected Kevin to pay the bills today because the benefactor shifted the original Molly to another universe, and this Molly's Kevin promised to pay the bills. Kevin is shocked. The benefactor explains that these small disagreements create chaos. Kevin doesn't believe him, and the benefactor says he replaced the original Molly when Kevin gave her a special pendant. Kevin says Molly just stopped wearing it, but the benefactor reveals that the original Molly never did. Outraged, Kevin demands proof and asks the benefactor to shift someone in the restaurant, like their waitress, Tina. As the benefactor starts to shift Tina, she and her parents look distraught, and Kevin changes his mind. But it's too late, and Tina vanishes before their eyes. The benefactor explains that normally he would replace Tina with a doppelganger from another universe, but Kevin wouldn't believe it, so he sends Tina to a universe where she doesn't exist at all. This has a terrible effect on the shifted person's mind. Kevin is shocked by what he has done. He asks the benefactor what he wants. The benefactor says shifting is a big job, and he can't do it alone. He has shifters in all universes helping him, and wants Kevin to be one. Kevin refuses to do such evil work, but the benefactor says many versions of Kevin from different universes already work for him. So this Kevin will eventually agree too. Kevin starts praying to God, surprising the benefactor. At first, the benefactor laughs, but when Kevin keeps praying, he gets angry and yells at Kevin, who then vanishes. Kevin apologizes to Tina's family and leaves. Five years pass and Kevin is still in this universe, where the entire Earth is under a totalitarian regime created by the benefactor. The people were in conflict and war, but the shifters arrived, secretly moving problematic figures like politicians and pastors to establish peace. They used devices on their wrists called deviators. After this, the benefactor reshaped the world into one of fear, distrust, and no faith. 
People live in miserable conditions with no hope, but Kevin keeps looking for glimmers of hope in the darkness. He now lives under a fake name because he is a wanted man for his illegal prayer in the cafe five years ago. The benefactor hasn't returned to this universe since then. Kevin works a menial job to afford food and writes what he remembers of the Bible, secretly distributing it because scripture is illegal here. He has one friend from work named Gabriel who helps him, and they are looking for a shifter so Kevin can steal a deviator and return to his own universe. Gabriel sometimes tries to convince Kevin that God has given up on him because he has lived in these miserable conditions for five years. But Kevin keeps his faith. Kevin goes to a special cinema where people can see alternate versions of themselves from other universes. The owner, Russo, is Kevin's friend. Russo explains that people used to watch better versions of themselves to live vicariously, but now they watch worse versions to feel better. All of Kevin's alternate versions are terrible people doing horrible things. But in one universe, he sees Molly and becomes ecstatic. Russo says it's unusual to see another person in alternate universes, and Kevin takes it as a sign from God. During a protest where a bridge is blocked by the police, a man suddenly runs through and disappears into thin air. People thought the shifters and the benefactor had left the planet, but they are still here. Kevin now has hope that he can find a deviator. Kevin sees a scary thing. A woman leaves her child alone in a shop. He remembers losing his own child the same way. Bad thoughts fill his head. He remembers how he and Molly stopped loving each other because he thought their son was still alive. She just wanted to be sad. Kevin wants to drink strong stuff. He finds some in the trash but can't drink it. His neighbor, Rudget, invites him to eat with him. Rudget and his family know who Kevin really is. Rudget wants Kevin to teach his girls about the Bible. Kevin tells them about Job. Job lost everything but never stopped believing in God. The TV says the bad man is back. He wants another Kevin to help him. Kevin goes to the special place to look for Molly again. Russo doesn't think he will find her, but he does. Kevin sees many Mollies. One is a nurse with a child, one is a teacher, and one is a helper person. She wears a necklace Kevin gave her. Kevin knows this is his real Molly. Russo is very surprised. Kevin wants to know where she is, but Russo says it's hard to find out. Kevin knows where to find a special thing to move between worlds. It's on the bad man's wrist. Kevin wants to steal it. He asks Gabriel for a gun. Gabriel says it's dangerous. The next day, the bad man comes with another Kevin. Kevin tries to go to the restaurant with the gun, but he ends up back in his room. He tries again and again, but it doesn't work. He gets hurt. Kevin asks God for help. The bad man comes into the room and takes Kevin's gun. He brings Gabriel and asks if the gun is his. Gabriel says no. The bad man laughs. He says people are quick to turn on each other. He says God helped Kevin once, but then left him alone. The bad man wants Kevin to help him again. Kevin asks about his son. The bad man doesn't answer. He says Kevin is not good, just like the other Kevins. He tells Kevin to look outside. Kevin looks outside. Kevin finds out that the police shot Rudget just because he knew Kevin. Then, the police come after Kevin. They shoot up his room and kill Gabriel. As Gabriel falls, Kevin sees a deviator on his wrist and realizes he is a shifter. He grabs the device and shifts to another universe, where he falls into a lake. He shifts again and ends up in a psych ward, where other versions of Gabriel chase him. He meets Tina, a waitress in the psych ward, and feels guilty for putting her in this situation. Before he can apologize, more Gabriels arrive, and he shifts again. This time, he ends up in the house of a mob boss version of himself. The mob boss tries to shoot him and take his deviator, but Kevin escapes. Finally. Kevin returns to his room and sees Rudget being loaded into an ambulance. The police spot Kevin and chase him. He rushes to the cinema and finds the original Molly. Russo gives him the coordinates to her universe. Kevin arrives in her universe and faces Molly. He tells her he loves her more than anything and apologizes for not giving her space to grieve their son. He says they can get back together, but Molly says he ended things. Kevin realizes he might have done that in this universe. He gives a speech about how they can make it work in any reality. The speech moves Molly, but before Kevin can finish, the benefactor arrives and takes him back. The benefactor reveals he knows everything Kevin has done for the past five years. To prove Kevin is no different from other Kevins, he gives him a choice. Reunite Tina with her family or reunite with Molly. Kevin takes a while to decide. The benefactor says that just because Kevin wants Molly does not make it the wrong choice. Kevin calls him a liar, and the benefactor angrily says he is not a liar. God is. He argues that if God truly cares, protects, and forgives, why let the devil do such horrible things freely? Why allow the world to become a dark mess? 
He says God has abandoned them. Kevin responds that even in the darkest places, he has seen beauty and hope, proving to him that God exists. Kevin chooses Tina. He says goodbye to Molly in his heart. The benefactor is angry. He wants to kill Kevin. Suddenly, a bright light appears. Kevin disappears. He wakes up in a restaurant bathroom. He is not hurt. He comes out. He sees Molly sitting alone. She is a nurse with a child. Kevin talks to her. He uses the same words she used before. He asks her on a date. She agrees. They get married. Kevin has a happy life with Molly. They have two kids, a girl and a boy. It is like the story of Job. God gives him double what he lost. This is the end. Please like our channel and subscribe. Tell us what movie you want us to talk about next.